Inner Quest explores various pathways through which you can connect with the infinite wisdom of the universe and apply it to personal, professional, and spiritual growth. This program featuring accomplished practitioners, educators, and authors is provided by Infinity Foundation, an innovative center for holistic studies and research. We invite you to share this journey with us. Hello, welcome to InterQuest. My name is Jay Stone, your host for today. And two of my favorite guests and favorite uh, healers, we have Miguel Latronica on the far right and Dr. Mary Farhi. And I'd like to do a little introduction. Miguel is, has been teaching the science and art of yoga and stretch therapy for over 20 years. Over the years, Miguel has worked with a broad range of students from professional athletes in the NBA and NFL to kids and other healing arts aspirants. Uh, to date, Miguel has been awarded many exercise and therapeutic patents, all of which are used in various health and fitness facilities around the world. And I visited Miguel yep. after our interview, so there is an interview about your invention, the Mighty Body Bands. Yes. And I'd like to talk a little bit about Dr. Mary Farhi. Dr. Farhi is a certified yoga teacher and practicing physician focusing on functional medicine and women's health. Dr. Fari is a board certified, is board certified in both obstetrics and gynecology and integrative medicine. She's completed her 200 hour yoga training at Kripala Center for Yoga and Health in Massachusetts. She's also certified in menopause practitioner by the North American Menopause Society and currently is completing her functional medicine certification. Her focus is, uh, did you already complete that? Yeah. Okay. Uh, we're we're, we're going to talk <laughs> yeah, about that. Yeah. yeah, and her focus is on incorporating integrative therapies using functional medicine model in order to assist patients in creating wellness and health. And she wants everybody to know she scraped her <laughs> knee playing with her children, <laughs> or scraped with her pickleball. Uh, pickleball. Yeah. Never heard of pickleball uh, today. Uh, but uh, we're going to focus on on this book written by uh, Miguel and uh, Dr. Mary Farhi and. The title of the book is The Light from Within, Yoga Workbook and Journal. And he also has a course to go along with it, A Light from Within, Yoga Course. Uh, Miguel, uh, why did you choose the title, A Light from Within? Well, you know, from a very young age, I've always, the poetry that I've read when I was a young boy, I think influenced the way I think and feel about myself and the world. And I've always thought that that's what, helps lead us in life, this beautiful energy of light inside. So we all come from the sun, we all come from Earth. solar dust, if you will, and it's even inside of us. Well, uh, I've looked at your book uh, extensively, and what I like about the book, it's about everyone's own light, not yes. your light. Yes. And so you help people uh, get in touch with their light and shine it on themselves so they yes. live a healthier and happier life. Uh, That's Miguel, exactly right. Miguel, what inspired you to write uh, A Light from Within Workbook and Journal? Yeah, well, as you alluded to earlier, for the last 20, 25 years now, I've been teaching yoga. And as soon as I found yoga, I loved it. I had no intention uh, teaching yoga. And uh, it, it found me, as I like to say. Didn't you have like an accident and that that caused you to start yoga? Yeah, I have uh, extra vertebrae, and I have a very okay. severe stenosis, which means not a lot of room for nerve uh, impingement. And so I was very limited as to all the different things that I could do as it relates to sports, even taking long walks. So as soon as I found yoga at the age of 25, it literally shifted my life. I felt better, I could do activities differently, and of course I also found that there was an emotional component that unfolded as well. So all of these things uh, intrigued me, to say the least, to lead me to this very day, uh, talking about our book. Okay, our book, and I should mention to the audience that you two are married. Yes. How, how long have you been married? Yeah, almost 10 years now. Well, congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. Um, and so I'm a very lucky guy for her. She's a beautiful, beautiful woman. 
that's that's great. I yeah. one of the nicest things I ever heard was from a client of mine. He said, "I've been married to my wife for over 25 years, yes. and I love her more today than the day yeah. I married her." Yeah, that's very beautiful. It's exactly how I feel. So, uh, uh, Dr. Farhi, you've got a lot of initials and titles after your name. I mean, people are familiar with MD for medical doctor and. Uh, we didn't have room on the screen for the MPH, the Masters in Public Health. Can you talk a little bit about all those initials uh, at, at the end of your name? Um, sure. So I, um, and I, I guess that's part of my journey, right, to where I am today. Uh, so my background before medical school was in public health oh. and specifically in epidemiology. So that's really about... Um, creating wellness and it's about health prevention so that was where I started from decided to go to medical school because um, at that time it was either a PhD or medicine thinking I would go back to public health and so the MD is medical doctor the MPH is uh, masters in public health and epidemiology but as I started in private practice and even after residency I realized there was something missing for me from the traditional training and I had a you know great education at the University of Minnesota great residency at Rush in Chicago and but I realized what was missing was that prevention piece that I had started with in public health mm -hmm. we were so focused on disease models which is what started me in my path of exploring um, integrative medicine so the ABOIM is a new board certification um, a year ago it was uh, standardized and it's the American Board of Integrative Medicine. And so do you sit for a test? Do you, yeah. Did, did so you, you have to show that you have uh, certain qualifications in order to even be considered to sit, and then you sit for a um, four-hour exam. Mm -hmm. Okay. And yep. so integrative medicine focuses on pre prevention? Well, it does, but it focuses really on mind, body, spirit. Okay. So looking at the person as a whole person, not the specific silos of traditional medicine, the ologies, the cardiology, the gynecology. It's really looking at the whole person. Um, I then took it one step further, and that's when I have finished my certification in functional medicine. So that's not a board certification. It's through the Institute of Functional Medicine. The Cleveland Clinic just opened the first um, functional uh, medicine. And that's really trying to understand root cause of disease. So instead of saying someone has, as an example, high cholesterol, it's like, well, what's going on? What can we address from a nutritional standpoint, an activity standpoint, a genetic standpoint that could um, really... Yeah, understand the root cause. Now, the book, uh, A Light from Within, do you consider that both uh, healing and as well as prevention? Um, I think it's hard to really separate those two because I think <laughs> I think healing is part of that whole process. It's, it's and interesting answer. So I think that what we need to think about is wellness on this whole spectrum. Mm -hmm. So when we talk about prevention, I think it's really, so we have what we traditionally think of as, do I have a disease? But we forget that there's this whole spectrum from optimal wellness before somebody progresses down to dis-ease, mm -hmm. whatever that may mean. So I think in some ways, prevention is about shifting our attention away from this end of that spectrum to this end. Okay, and what's this end and what's that end? So disease versus wellness. Okay, okay, so the focus is yeah. on, on, on creating and, health. And I, I see, so not waiting for something wrong to go see a doctor and right. eat healthier and exercise more and right. manage the stress better. It's just, just do those things so and I, you're less likely to get sick. Right, it, so it's about building up reserve in our bodies, mm -hmm. right? And that's what I love about this book because... In, t in terms of, you know, using mindfulness and paying attention, so many of us stop paying attention when our bodies speak to us. So if somebody comes in and they may be experiencing um, joint pain, as an example, you know, what is that about? Are they listening? Some people don't listen to that, and they'll start taking medication. And so what I love about Miguel's book and the program that we've developed is that it's really teaching people to become mindful, not just about their emotions, mm -hmm. um, but about their physical body as well. 
Okay. Do you want to add anything about prevention? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I, I think <clears throat> we all know that the technological world that we live in, I like to say we have only so much bandwidth, and we're all so busy, and we lead very busy lives, and we have very little bandwidth at the end of the day, at the end of the month, at the end of the year. So a lot of what Mary's saying, especially as it pertains to the book, it's, it's about learning how to um, prioritize what's important in your life, which is including health, which is including emotional awareness, which is including critical thinking skills. And it's taking these tools and finding a way to be comfortable with the bandwidth if, that you have so that you are more restful, you are more relaxed, so you're not always reactive to the things before you. So a lot of times it's just pausing, taking a moment, you know, what do I feel? What am I thinking? What does that mean right now? And that's what much of this book is about. Five minute meditations every day, working through the dieting of the book, working through 102 questions. And this is all a process that leads us to self-inquiry, if you will. All right. Uh, I'm going to show, uh, kind of, it's kind of, uh, I feel it's an overview and uh, I see one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, seven. different sections. Yes. Uh, let's see if we can, Jen can zero in on this. And uh, well, let's start at the top. We have uh, affirmations. Mm -hmm. You want to just say a little bit about each section? Yeah, sure. So that's right. So the affirmations, the whole book, it doesn't matter. You don't have to start at the top. You can start anywhere on this wheel here. And But yes, affirmations, journaling, the green is workbook exercises. There are haikus, mudras, which are nothing more, Jay, than these different hand gesticulations. Mm -hmm. We do a lot of yoga throughout the book. This is the physical practice? That's the physical practice of okay. yoga, the yoga poses, and a lot of the philosophy that goes with it, or some of it. There's also a deck of cards that you can cut out that reinforce your learning. Uh, so it's like having a regular deck of cards. You can play 21, but you learn about all the different poses, affirmations, haikus, and questions. Um, and that's, that's what this is. So you can jump in on the wheel anywhere, and that's a portal into the book, if you will, that drives you deeper into your self-inquiry and self-awareness. Okay. And and I, I just yeah, want, wanted to clarify, yeah, sure. because you said something important, Jay. You said the physical practice. Yeah. We actually, one of the things that we each week talk about is the different limbs of yoga. So yes. as you, In the you know, eight eight limbs. so we talk yeah. about the eight limbs of yoga. So um, this week we were talking about yamas, and so part of their yes. homework was to go explore it. So we actually do the physical practice, but we also incorporate all eight so limbs. So you, you said we were talking where were you talking about uh, this? At our yes. course. Yes. Okay. Our eight week course that works in conjunction with yeah. the book. Let me, uh, I'll, I'll hold this up, uh, Miguel and Dr. Farhi, and see yes. if we can't uh, zoom in on this. There we go. A life. So this is a course, and I'm going to open up the book. And um, you yeah, want to talk a little bit. So, so here, week one, week two, week three. And, and so it's a kind of a step-by-step -step guide. Yeah. Actually, I'm going to take this out so it doesn't fall. And if you turn it this way, then okay. maybe they can, they can watch you. Yeah. Okay. So this just demonstrates, this goes through our, it's a two-hour and 15-minute class. And so we have our physical practice. We talk about the affirmations, the questions. So this is all working through the book. And over here, it lists each page where they can find that in the book. And we have a Dr. Mary's Corner, which um, is health related. Okay. The mudras Miguel was talking about. Um, so we have a different flow, but try and stick to um, a schedule each week. But we incorporate all eight limbs, because as you know, it's not just about the physical practice. And, and uh, how much time will a, a, a somebody doing the course spend each day I, I'm sure it's up to the right. individual. Right. What, is there a recommended amount of time? Yeah, we say 20 minutes. We say 15 to 20 minutes a day is great to work on the meditations, to work on the yoga poses, to work on the questions and all the different um, supplementary, supplementary information such as diets and um, wellness. Well, that's, that's 
pretty uh, minimal amount of time. I mean, a typical yoga class is mm -hmm. an hour, hour and a half sometimes, yeah. two hour classes for yes. beginners. You yes. feel 20 minutes is sufficient? Well, that's the thing. We encourage, so people come in, and, and this whole book, you know, it's uh, 342 pages. So we've taken a lot of the elements of the books and teach them through this eight-week course, and the course is about two and a half hours long each time, which incidentally is also certified um, so people can get certification and different um, levels of... Um, uh, yeah, you, you, uh, you have... Uh, Initials, what is it, the yoga? Um, experience registered yoga teacher. Yeah. Yes. What, what uh, can you explain how, you, I think both of you have that, sure. correct? Sure. Well, it's different. There's yeah. um, RYT, ERYT. ERYT means that if you have over, I think it's two or 5,000 hours, you actually become experienced registered yoga teacher. In teaching. So it, in teaching. So it's a national um, board that's called Yoga Alliance, and so they certify you. And so that's yeah. what that is. I'm just laughing because when I started with yoga in like yeah. 19, 80 there was none of that there wasn't yeah. yeah there wasn't it actually came out in the in the mid 80s to late 80s but yes you're right there wasn't yeah, yeah. yeah. so I'd just like to add something to your question about the the time you know one of the things that I find in working with people to help them focus on wellness mm -hmm. is sometimes you have to take the baby steps so if we had a course and somebody's wanting to explore yoga and we say to them we want you to do an hour and a half every day for somebody who has a busy life they may not be able to do that so sure. the beautiful thing about the course and the book is that we're giving them all these tools but it's something that they're going to continue even if they did spend that hour every day there's so much in the book that they're always going to be able to go back to to refer to so really i think whatever way we can help someone take the first step up the mountain, whatever that path is for them, and whatever amount of time they're willing to explore, I think is great. So, Because it's, it's yeah. different for everyone. And that's what right. we found. People actually become overwhelmed. That's the first question they ask is, how much of a time commitment is this? They're so worried, and it gets back to the bandwidth again. It's like mm -hmm. everybody is so busy, an hour and a half every day, that, that that's enough to chase them away. But when we say 20 minutes, they're like, Oh, well, I could find 20 minutes in my day. And then, but we recommend go to two, three yoga classes in your community a week. We totally recommend it to take them to the next level. But as a minimum, because this is a process, 20 minutes is the commitment. Yeah, and I would <clears throat> say that you are the more traditional approach. Uh, I remember when I first learned yoga, mm -hmm. uh, I'd study the Iron Gear style. Uh, you spent a year or two practicing you know, being a good person, the yamas, the niyamas, yep. what mm -hmm. you should and shouldn't do, even before you did the physical asanas. Yes. And I've heard yoga being criticized in America that it's too much of, uh, of gymnastics or a workout, right. enough, not enough about self-realization. And I yes. think your, your approach is, you know, multifaceted and is about self-realization and self-awareness. Yeah. yeah. It, it is, Jay, and I, I think you very succinctly summed it up, um, for sure. I think that the beautiful thing about yoga, there's a thing called the Yoga Sutras, is that it's very dynamic. It's not a static system. The sci yoga is a science, and it's, it's so dynamic that the definitions of what it is change. So 100 or 200 years from now, I have a hunch it's going to be very different. But yes, there are the tenets, the basic tenets that never change. And they've been written in such a way where there can be different interpretation. So this book, for example, was written as a, as a, as a, as a, as a journey, and it's everybody's unique journey. Mm -hmm. And that leads them deeper into, thus, you know, the title, A Light From Within, A Light From Within Their Heart. And once they sort of get there, I don't think they trade it in for anything. They love to reclaim their self because we've, we've forgotten ourself over all over the years with just all the demands of life. I, I agree. I agree. Well, I've got a question for Dr. Farhi. Uh, why spend time and money learning integrative and functional medicine when they are unnecessary for you to work as a medical doctor? 
Um, I guess first and foremost, you know, it's again part of my journey of learning and mm -hmm. creating my own wellness. Uh, but I think that as a community, people are dissatisfied with uh, oftentimes how they're feeling. And I think there's more of a shift in general to people wanting to be healthier. And, um, you know, traditional medicine in the West is great for an emergency. If mm -hmm. you ha have an appendix that ruptures, thank goodness you can go down the street to the ER, have laparoscopy, and probably go home the same day. Very, very great at, cu at treating acute things. But we're not very good at treating chronic disease, right? Chronic disease has become epidemic in our country, heart disease, diabetes, things like that. So, And it's, uh, it's affecting people earlier and earlier in absolutely. life. Absolutely. So this is the first generation of children that are not expected to live longer than their parents. I mean, in, we, it, in the United States. In the United States. Yeah, but, uh, and I've interviewed Susie Roos, who's a cancer treatment specialist, mm -hmm. and she's gone to other countries and looked at their cancer treatment and view of wellness, and it's quite different than the United Absolutely. States. Absolutely. So we have to go back to the foundation. We have to use food as medicine. Mm -hmm. And so understanding when I would realize that I felt like based on my traditional training, I didn't have enough tools to help. So I think that it's so important as a community to recognize we have all these healing traditions. So here we are talking about yoga. You know, Ayurveda is a medicinal system from India that's also 5,000 years old that's used food as medicine longer than, you know, well, we... isn't Hippocrates the, the first the fa Right, the father of medicine. So yeah. Yeah. I think that for me, there is so much to learn. I, I can never stop learning. And if we think that we've, you know, the medical knowledge doubles, I think, every two to three years, they say. And so we're constantly learning and going back to basics. You know, we go full circle sometimes to come all the way back. And a good example of that is actually, okay. speaking of Hippocrates, so there's one of the oldest first officials of medical universities was the school of Salerno in, in Salerno, Italy. And back then, all the things that Mary's talking about, so this is going back to like 340, don't quote me exactly, but 340 BC, somewhere, School of Salernum. And this is exactly what they talked about, diet for health. They talked about diet. They talked about exercise. They talked about the importance of contentment and happiness. So it's fear and it's worrying and all these things. That, that's, what's, that's what's eating away at the vitality of who we are. And, and I think uh, Il, Il, Italians have stayed true to the early yes. uh, teachings, yes. uh, they, they have one of the higher life expectancies yes. in the world. Yes. Coming from an Italian heritage, <laughs> yes, I would uh, very much agree with that. Well, <laughs> and I, I have an Italian tractor that yeah. I use for yeah. my garden, yeah. and I'm, it's got the Italian flag on it. I'm very yeah. happy with it. So t s since you've mentioned food and how important it is to our health, what is your, uh, your uh, book, The Light From Within, and your uh, course, what does it say about food and how to, what kind of guidance does it give? Yeah, well actually I'd love to default with Marianne on that one because she is a really pivotal part in the eight week course as it relates to diet and nutrition and that's a really, really important part. When you're finished with that, at some point when you ask me about the emotional component, I'd, I'd like to take a stab at that, but, but go ahead. Okay. Yeah. So each week we set aside time uh, where I will have a specific Topic. So our first week was that whole concept of what we call the shift in, perspe in uh, perspective, where we really need to shift away from disease to wellness. Mm -hmm. And actually, when you asked me about the difference with that and prevention, even the prevention is preventing disease. It's still pulling us towards that disease model versus mm -hmm. when we you know, think of the concept of wellness. So... Uh, this last week, we, we met on Sunday, and uh, we talked about the immune system. So how does our immune system work? You know, we tend oftentimes to think of things like inflammation as a negative. But inflammation is actually a very necessary part of our body to heal. But what happens oftentimes is there isn't resolution, and it becomes chronic. Mm -hmm. So we talk about what would, causes would, that. Would arthritis be an example of chronic inflammation? Sure. 
Okay. But even heart disease, Alzheimer's disease, dementia, those are also examples of chronic inflammation. Mm -hmm. In different organs are just manifesting differently in our body. Okay. And so um, we talk about what could contribute to that, you know, whether it's a lifestyle factor like smoking or whether it's a, the, what we call the SAD diet or standard American diet. Mm -hmm. Now, I, I've heard that uh, that sitting in front of a computer for eight hours a day is like smoking a, a pack and a quarter? I don't so know, but it's, you know, so that's one of the things, the EMF waves, right? I mean, mm -hmm. so we're, we all think, oh, it's so great I can go to, you know, such and such a place and work because they have Wi-Fi that I can use, but those are all EMF things that we're exposed to. So we talk about, you know, what could create chronic inflammation, and then we talk about how can we heal and help our body in that resolution using food, using um, um, essential fatty acids like fish oil, which is great for inflammation, using nutraceuticals like turmeric or ginger or things like that. So each week we will incorporate, so next week we're talking about the importance of gut function, which is huge, and we could mm -hmm. spend two hours on that, but we try and do small snippets. Is there a relationship between gut function and the immune system? So 80% of your immune system is in your gut. Oh, wow. I did not know that. What, what, are, what are you showing? So I'm just showing here, like this is one example. We have this thing in a book called The Pearls of Wisdom. And so that's just one little snippet, but very simple, but very succinct and to the point about some of the things that, you know, we want to impart to people. About diet. Yeah, about diet. Yeah. Yep. D about diet. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yep. So, um, so anyway, we just try and really teach people to use food as medicine first. Okay. And then, you know, nutraceuticals and supplements mm -hmm. as needed. But again, we can, the same thing that people criticize Western medicine in terms of overusing medication, we can also overuse supplements. Mm -hmm. Or food. I, I, yeah. Things like that. But you know. Uh, I, I, so are you offering any cooking classes? Not yet. Oh, not yet. That's a yes. good idea. Yeah. 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 Well, what, what are some of the basics that people should ha eat daily or things they should avoid or, or um, you know, maybe multiple times each week, you know. Maybe they're broccoli. Yeah. So I think um, he's, there's an interesting study that was done where they did, um, gave people what they called a medium calorie meal, which was essentially um, a very famous restaurant that has Golden Arches uh, breakfast meal. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> and um, and they checked something called C-reactive protein, which is a marker of inflammation in the body, and that went up for four hours after they ate this medium calorie meal. And so when you think about people who eat that standard American diet, four hours later they go for lunch, have the same thing, so this inflammation chronically, so they repeated the story, up. they repeated the study, excuse me, and they had them each eat broccoli after that meal, and their C-reactive protein didn't go up. So wow. that's why Miguel's laughing. Simple All you yeah. have to do, yeah. Yeah. if I don't have something good, I'm just going to have some broccoli. But vegetables are, we hear everyone talking about detoxification, right? I mean, right. And so detoxification is really supporting our body's innate ability, again, to clear things out. And that's our vegetables. So I think eating six cups of vegetables every day, every color of the rainbow is super important. Okay. So we emphasize this throughout and, the and years. You can, and people can pick and choose their own vegetables. Of course. Yeah. Yeah. Well, believe it or not, we got about 30 seconds. So yes. who wants to, uh, you want to say uh, last 30 seconds up to you? You know, uh, all I want to say is that the book really, it, it, it's a journey into oneself. And really, a lot of it is about diet. A lot of it is about meditation. A lot of it is about emotional intelligence. And really, as Mary alluded to, a shift in perception. That's such a big part of this book. Okay, shift i got to cut you off. Of course. This is part one of a two-part series. For more information, stay tuned until the credits at the end. Until next time, wish you good health, good spirits, and good fortune. Thank you. Doctor, thanks, Thank Miguel. Thank you, Jake. Thank you. Thanks for having us. Yeah, we... Or call us at 847-831-8828.